uh, public uh, speaking so um and generally on on the uh, coaching and entrepreneurship so all to your experience just just how did mm -hmm. you experience it well i definitely see because i work with entrepreneurs and a lot of my clients are coaches too what i see is that when people are deciding to start a business they need to create a message that they will give to their audience whether they will do it on a live or create videos or they will be speaking to their potential clients and customers they need to know what is their story they need to be able to craft that story they will need to break their fear of public speaking and then finally go and share that story and they need to know how to deliver it with confidence so definitely public speaking is important i mean it's everywhere how can you talk to a client or potential client if you don't have enough confidence if you don't know how to deliver the message and with coaches definitely before coaches even are able to start working one-on-one -on -one, they need to create those videos and messages and go show themselves to the world and for that you need to speak <laughs> <laughs> so that people see that you can speak, that you can deliver a message. Definitely in entrepreneurship, public speaking is everywhere. Even if those coaches and entrepreneurs are not planning to go on the stage, still they need to create videos. Usually coaches create courses also. So they have both of those. And if you create courses, then probably you will have to create videos. Even if you don't show yourself on the screen, you will still have to speak. So public speaking is everywhere. Yes. Um, in your opinion, so how could the entrepreneurs and coaches develop so the uh, the skill of of presentation and speaking? Because a lot of people they don't understand that you can develop this skill. So within you, you can master it. Um, a lot of them, they, they think that uh, like you are born with, with this talent. So many of them, they are telling to me like this. Mm -hmm, yes, <laughs> I know. <clears throat> it's actually kind of a popular opinion that you have to be born a great public speaker. No, like you have to I don't be born. So. I, I also, I disagree. You don't have to be born with it. It's a skill. You can develop it yes. just like every other skill. Like you learn a language, you learn to write, you learn to read, the same with public speaking, you can learn that. And how do you do that? There is uh, usually a strategy. I have my own strategy. I usually teach mindset, message and delivery. So I start with understanding, of, uh, building confidence of breaking the fear, understanding your own nervousness, then knowing your audience and setting goals, then message. So you write your presentation and your speech and you learn how to put storytelling into it. You learn how to be more persuasive. And then you learn delivery, how to actually present with confidence and with power. You work on your voice, you work on your posture, on your eye contact, on body language. So all of this, it's just a skill and you learn it step by step. And it always starts with mindset. With so mindset. for everybody who wants to start developing this skill of public speaking, start with your mindset. And awareness, eh? you have to be aware of your behavior. Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. Emotional intelligence and self-awareness is a huge part of public speaking. Yeah. You have to know yourself. You need to know how you feel. You need to know how you look. That's why I always suggest and advise everybody to record yourself on a video. Create videos of yourself and then watch and see what would you want to change next time. That's a great tool that helps you increase your self-awareness so you will understand how good you are where you want to improve and that that will clean up your next video because the next one will be much better than the previous one i i want to to give a tip um i have a daughter of 20 years yeah and wow. so <laughs> so and always I, I I was recording videos or or speeches and then afterwards I was listening and watching so to to my own videos and speeches and she looked at me are you kidding me what are you doing <laughs> are you admiring yourself <laughs> but that's important yes you have to yeah. watch I watch myself all the time and actually thank you for that because I watched myself on video. 
I was able to improve, to change. Because you know, another great tip, I heard it from somebody else. Watch yourself without sound. So just your gestures, your movements, and don't listen to you, like turn off the sound. And then do the opposite. Listen to yourself without watching, without looking. Because in that way, you will not be distracted by the sound. So you will pay attention to the movements and you will see, oh, well, these gestures are too annoying. Like for example, I do this sometimes a lot. That's why I try to control myself and not move my hands that much and only use gestures when I want to point to something, to show something. <laughs> and at the same time, when you don't look, when you don't watch, but you only listen, then you can pay attention to the voice, to pauses, to the way to the your speech flows. Yes, and to the content, definitely. So definitely, for sure, watch yourself on video. Yes, but I did it. So I was watching to help myself just to improve the quality of my communication, to uh, observe my behavior as well. So during my speeches, because that's the way how you can improve or, or at least that's, that's my tip, how I did it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great tip for sure. Yes. Yeah, watch. You can see so much when you watch yourself and listen to yourself and notice. Mm -hmm. Okay. How did you create your first coaching program for public speaking? Because uh, you know, the most of the the entrepreneurs or the coaches they are struggling with, so they don't have any idea how to create their first um, online package. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, because I was teaching or have been teaching English, uh, not English, I was, <laughs> I've been teaching English for more than 20 years, but public speaking 13 years. And I'm trying to remember when I created this course. So first it was a course that I was teaching to different executives, to also entrepreneurs, but they were coming to me, to the courses, and we were sitting in the classroom and I was teaching it to them, mainly from books, from other courses, how did I create it? I'm trying to remember looking back 13 years ago. It was, it was a lot of books. I read a lot and I took information from several different sources. Right now, I remember clearly four, four books that I started with. Mm -hmm. and so I took information from those four books and I created this course. Then when I started creating my coaching program and I got my own business and I started working on creating courses and selling them online. Then I took everything that I was teaching before. So all that information from those books and from my own experience. And then I took new books because of course now it's not just those four, it, it's 20 or more. It's more, it's, it's probably 30 different books and different courses because I invested in courses, a lot, like thousands of dollars. Wow. And I invested in many different courses and mentors and coaches. I work with a business coach and I have my own speaking mentor and I had speaking mentors in uh, Toastmasters clubs. It's, it's important to grow. Yes. So if, yes. if a coach or an entrepreneur, if you want to create your own course or your own program, but you are not being coached by anybody, then how can you ask, how can you charge other people yes, something? Deliver well, quality. Yes. How can you deliver quality? <laughs> Did you invest yourself in a, in a coach? Do you have a coach right now, a mentor? That is super important. That's why, that's how I did it. I had mentors and coaches and lots of books and I took my experience. I took the previous course and put it into this program and then said it. This is, a, you know, this is a very important uh, part um, of the NLP <laughs> coaching. Why? Because um, uh, many people and uh, entrepreneurs and coaches. So what uh, they have to understand that you have to be aware of the fact what you don't know and what you have to learn. Mm -hmm. Because um, so many they are under undervaluing um, this aspect. So they think that's very easy. No, you have to create a um, um, certain structure in your coaching when you are providing the, the coaching mm -hmm. and the acceptance that you don't know what you don't know yeah mm -hmm. um i i'm um 
I give this tip because so I have uh, coached uh, um, many people and they um, said to me, oh no, but it's very easy. This is very easy. Okay, then, okay. <laughs> Why are you here at this moment? <laughs> and so I think that it, it makes a huge sense. <laughs> this is awareness and <laughs> to accept um, what you don't know, you don't know, but you have to master and to learn that. Yes. Okay, um, I thought that you are living in UK because you speak English fluently. It's like and without accent, so it's amazing to to hear your English skills. <laughs> well, my English actually is more American. <clears throat> my company is American. I registered my business in the US because I have a lot of my partners, my investors are in the US, and I have a lot of friends. I go there, I used to go there every year, now maybe every other year, because I also have like a family. They're more of friends, but they, we've been friends for more than 20 years and they become a family for me. And that's why, but my English level, because I used to be an English teacher, that's how I started. <clears throat> I stepped away from that. So I still teach some, but just like really little. And uh, I always taught people to immerse themselves in the English language and how they can make it their first. Now it's my first language. I think in English. It's, it's harder for me to teach okay. in Russian or Ukrainian, for example. I was asked by one uh, big multinational company in Moscow and I, they asked me to teach in Russian. So I did. I gave them my slides in English, but I taught in Russian. And, and it was a little harder because I had to translate some things in my head. When you read only in English, when you watch things, movies, documentaries, courses, I listen to books, audiobooks all the time, and I take courses all the time, like nonstop, and all of this is in English. So if you consume material information in English, then you will start thinking in it. That's what I always suggest to everybody who's not an English yeah. native speaker. Immerse yourself into the language and just living in the country where everybody speaks English is not enough. You've got to immerse yourself in it. So you have to consume because you know how there are a lot of people, they go to America and they only live in the Russian speaking communities. Oh, and that's ridiculous because yes. then they don't improve their language. They then they are limited to, yeah. to grow up. Yes. And to, to develop their, their skills. Mm -hmm. uh, I recognize this because I see here in Netherlands as well. So that they are like communities, you know, from one country and so they go together they are doing things together but me no <laughs> good good yes, yes. no Better because because my life so um, it goes by by self of like so i i decided to study to work at myself to to mm -hmm. master my skills just to become the person who who i am at this moment um because of that so i think it's very important just um to break <laughs> yeah, the the try yes mm -hmm. <laughs> to break that so just to, to follow your own path mm -hmm. okay we have four minutes <laughs> uh, would you like to to talk about your your uh, uh born country i think because a lot of people they, they are very curious to know uh, more about you personally <laughs> well i was actually i was born in russia oh. in murmansk yeah but i and i lived there till i was 12 then we moved to ukraine and uh, i live in ukraine now but i travel around the world to teach and speak and uh, run marathons yeah i love my country i love ukraine much more than than russia it's this is, this is the, the well what? i'm not gonna go into reasons <laughs> <laughs> I love Ukraine and my parents were born here even though I was born in Russia but all my family they're here and um, I love it and when I think about where would I want to live in the world I don't even want to move anywhere in the world because it's it's comfortable here in a way and there are reasons why but what is great is that I can just go anywhere in the world for work for leisure for for running for sport and if i need if i want i can live a few months there or a few months there and that is the the lifestyle that i also go after and that is 
the best, but to have the like the base, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's here because all friends here, family are, are here also. Yeah, another country where I have a lot, a lot, a lot of friends, it's in the US. It just it just happens that way. No, they- because I, I saw um a lot of friends from US. Um I, I mean you are talking all the time because I'm following you as well. So on, on your mm-hmm. Facebook and I saw um, many friends from US. And because of so I thought that probably you living or in US or in UK. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm so, the citizen the citizen of the world. <laughs> yeah. Of the whole world, let's say. And I think that that is the best. Like I don't really want to be a citizen of any other country but Ukraine. I love my country. I think it's beautiful. It's wonderful. The political situation is horrible. I can't stand our. <laughs> I'm not going to go into politics. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, but uh, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if we detach ourselves from that. If we focus on things that we can do for the whole world, that it doesn't even matter where we live. Because I know that I belong to the whole world. My clients, my friends, they are from all over the world. Just like you said, I also, I, I work with people in so many co- different countries and they're yes. friends already and built relationships with them. So that's beautiful. I think that that is the best. Yes, but I think what the most matter is um, uh, your personality, your way to be and uh, that you are doing what you love. So that's, I think that's, that's yes. uh, the conclusion of our interview. So you have watched the interview uh, with Natasha um, Basilevich and Veronica Seban. Uh, I want to, to thank you and I want us well so to invite uh, everyone to like and to subscribe to this channel. And if you are curious um, and want to know more about Natasha, uh, just go below on the link and you will discover more about here. You can book here as well so for coaching session. Thank you again for your time, Natasha. So you are amazing. Mm-hmm. Thank <laughs> uh, you very much. And then Thank I you see you soon. Wishing you a great day. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye. <laughs>